let us move on to what I already announced earlier. I want to do a final format tier list for current TCG format. And this is also going to be a YouTube video. It's been a while since we've recorded a tier list. Hello, YouTube. I hope you missed the tier list format. Here we are. I hope this is helpful to you. As always, please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content and want to support me. And uh, if I miss your deck or if there's a deck you really want my opinion on, make sure to leave a comment down below because I can't include every single deck in my tier lists. There's always that option. I'll try to answer as many comments as possible and tell you where I would put the deck. But this is a final tier list for like the cash tier off format. I want to do this because I think it's very interesting to look at a format in retrospective as well. And there are still a couple tournaments coming, so I think it's still helpful. But we usually do these at like the beginning of the format as we did with this format. But I think it's cool to take a step back and look at how the format has developed and what ended up being actually a good deck, right? Now we have hindsight. And we should use it, I think, to see what actually ended up performing and what actually ended up maybe being a little bit worse than we expected. But first, I'm very happy to announce that I have a new sponsor. From now on, I'm going to be partnering with none other than Cart Market. Cart Market is the European platform for buying and selling trading cards and accessories. You guys know I only have a few select sponsors because I only accept the ones I can really recommend and that's also the case with Cart Market. I've been using them to get my cards forever and if you don't know them yet I highly encourage you to check out the link in the description below. I'm really looking forward to working with Cart Market and now Let's move on with the video you're here for. Uh, you can see down here the decks that I decided to include in today's discussion. Like I said, not every deck can be included, but we still have plenty to talk about. The tiers that we have is absolute tier 0, tier 1, tier 1.5 of like decks that I think are, are pretty solid. I don't feel comfortable putting them as low as tier 2, you know. Tier 2, and then we have like tier 3 slash rogue decks. These are typically the ones that I would not recommend bringing to a tournament if your goal is to do as well as possible, right? Everything up here like if there's a tier 2 deck that you just like really like and you really want to play it then fine you know bring it to your regional or play it at a YCS but like tier 3 or rogue if your goal is to actually perform I don't recommend these types of decks there is a couple of sprite variants in here which might be due to the nature of the channel that you're watching this on but no comment on that I'm a fan of getting the elephant in the room out of the way I think cash Tira is a deck that I would put in tier 1 it's a deck that definitely performed maybe even better than I expected towards the beginning of the format but I don't think it would be warranted to put Cash Tira anywhere near tier zero. I don't think it's a format where Cash Tira is by far the best deck or like you have to play Cash Tira or you're playing a bad deck, that type of situation. I don't think that's the case. There is answers to Cash Tiras. I personally don't think Cash Tira is the best deck in the format in terms of like, if I had to go to a tournament now, I would still not play Cash Tira. But I think overall, in terms of performance, it can be rated as the deck that is definitely the most successful, right? And I think it makes a strong point for being at the very top of tier one. Branded, on the other hand, I think is a deck that, if I remember correctly, I put it like, right next to cash tira at the beginning of the format i think it's a little bit lower than that this is why i made the tier 1.5 category this morning when i made the, the tier list because i didn't feel comfortable putting branded in tier 2 i don't think it's a tier 2 deck i think it's still quite strong i do not think branded is among the best decks in the format though um which is reserved for like the tier 1 category whenever branded is super super popular people start countering it people start playing ash blossoms everywhere people cite stuff like d barrier and anti-spill and whatnot branded really suffers from that and i think branded in terms of representation was still pretty high like i see a lot of people play branded at like regionals and ycs levels but i think the results were kind of lacking like the deck did have some tops it did have some results but i think if you measure that by the representation by how many people played branded it almost feels like they kind of brute forced their way into top cut because like so many people played branded of course someone or some people were lucky enough to go through and like not get Ash the majority of their games and make it to top cut. But I think Branded overall in terms of their performance did not quite hold up to the expectations at the very beginning of the format. Tier 1.5 I think sums it up quite perfectly for Branded. Uh, Dragon Link is a deck that I did not expect it to do well. But a couple people did top YCSs and regionals with this deck. And uh, I'm going to put it at a solid tier 2. I think it's another deck that is possibly just carried by how many people seem to freaking love this deck. They just play it because they want to. And they are very experienced with it so they force themselves like you know if they have a good run they they basically just brute force themselves into top cut because like there's just this 
community of Dragon Link enjoyers, right? But we still have Bestials at full capacity, which is not great against Kashtira, but is good against some of the rogue decks. So you can like main deck a couple Bestials and side deck some more, and you will have a, a solid chance against a lot of these like tier two rogue other strategies. And um, yeah, Dragon Link is fine, right? If you really want to play Dragon Link, I think you can. All right, sprite variations. I think the best sprite version is Melfi Sprite. I don't think Melfi Sprite is a tier one deck. I think it is a high tier 1.5. I don't have much else to say. I respect the deck. I think it is good. It did win the European 250th YCS. That can't be understated. That is a pretty impressive feature. The deck is pretty good. I think just based on the fact that the follow-up without Elf is, is rather mediocre. Also because this deck does not make Toad, it does not get the Nimble Beaver for follow-up. So follow-up is a big deal for this deck. And it's really lacking in that department. And that's what stops me from putting it into tier one but the deck is solid the deck is very good right so um yeah tier 1.5 is not an understatement like that still is a very solid placement i think for melfi sprite runic sprite on the other hand pure runic sprite i'm a little bit disappointed at how runic sprite performed i expected it to perform a little bit better turns out if you have just sprites and just runics, the missing elf, it's a bigger deal than I thought. I mean, I, I never thought it was a not a big deal that we are not having elf, but I kind of had higher hopes for that. Maybe I was coping at the beginning of the format, but this deck has a major problem with follow-up. I think the deck would still function if you had more slots in the extra deck because you cannot replace the two or three elves with two or three other cards and expect the same result. You need like six or seven utility spots to make up for elf. And that's a problem, especially when you have to worry about Diablosis to also like banish some of your stuff. So you're just losing on extra deck utility. You're losing because you can't recycle Iperia. You can recycle Cap Shell, but you have to make Muckraker and discard a card for that, which is not bad, but not ideal. It struggles. Probably around the same power level left as Dragon Link. It's like, it's fine, especially if it goes first, but definitely not the best sprite version. Tri Brigade Sprite is a deck that I think goes along the same lines. I'm a little bit unexperienced with Tri Brigade Sprite. I haven't played it that much. I think it's maybe better than I'm giving it credit for, but I'm just not experienced enough with this deck to, to say, yeah, this is tier 1.5. This is a good version that is on par with Melfi Sprite. I don't know that. I'm not sure. I think it could be, but just based on the fact that not many people actually ended up playing the deck and not many people ended up performing with the deck i think is what makes me put it into high tier two but this is one where i might be wrong on it simply because i'm applying theory to it but i don't have the capacity to test every single deck extensively on this list i didn't see as much potential in tri brigade sprite as in other decks so i didn't focus on it in my preparations but i think the deck is fine and maybe i'm even underestimating a little bit and then pure sprite some hand traps some power spells and just make ahashima toad go in first i think it's a fine strategy overall what i like about it is that when you make toad going first you make sure you have follow-up for next turn because you get back your beaver i like that so i think in terms of follow-up it's a little bit better than melfi sprite but i think overall it's maybe very bottom of tier 1.5 i think overall it's slightly worse because the turn one combo is very inefficient the ashima line just takes a lot of bodies i think it's probably here with more testing and finding a good list it might even be a little bit worse than tri brigade sprite but it's it's a solid deck um i recommend you don't cope on tier right now i don't think that deck is good right now i don't see a reason to quite honestly tier is kind of cope it did top the 250th YCS. I'm not sure if on the back of that top, I should put it on the very bottom of tier two. I don't think I should because by definition, I think rogue decks can top a YCS. Adignister is very mediocre right now. I would not recommend playing Adignister into a field where people are actually playing Kaijus. So I don't like that. Uh, Marincess, I think is somewhere solid in tier two. Like the deck is fine. The deck is not great, but it's performed decently well. It's topped YCSs. It, it plays a lot of non-engine. It has solid one card combos. It's an all right deck. As much as it pains me to say this, as much as I hate to say this, as much as I despise math mech, I think Mathmic is a pretty solid deck. I've talked about this in the beginning of the format where I was like, if a deck can play a lot of non-engine in this format, where the format is super diverse and Kashtira really loses to a lot of non-engine cards, the decks that can play a lot of non-engine are going to be in a solid spot. And Mathmic, I think, out of the cyber strategies is like the best one because it plays a lot of non-engine. And if it draws non-engine plus circular, it does what it does, you know? 
And like the math mech one card combo is just so much stronger than the, the Marincess one card combo or committing everything into a towers. Like the math mech one card combo is just so strong. I think that's what sets it apart from the other two. It's like if I go second against Marincess and they resolve their full combo, I can win. If math mech goes first and resolves full combo, I'm not winning that unless I have specifically sided for the matchup like post side game one math mech goes first draw circular probably game only because i hate it i can't tell you it's bad because i don't think it is bad runic variants now we have some stuff to talk about i've included four runic variants that have been popping up more and more uh Naturia runic was kind of like the starting point where everyone started then plunder runic popped up and then at the 250th ycs uh specifically london i feel like the life twin runic sprite deck really popped off and the fur higher runic sprite of dinka Bui really popped off off as well so how would i rate these four i think runic decks are in a very very strong position this format the runic cards in general are just busted and we will talk about runics in the upcoming ban list discussion as well because i think the runic engine is incredibly strong incredibly uh, versatile and i'm not even hesitant on putting these two decks into tier one alongside cash tier i think those the runic variants are the only decks i'm confident are on par with cash tier. and i'm gonna be honest if there was another ycs in this format i would still bring this deck over cash tier. i think this deck was great and once again this is not me patting myself on the back because this deck this time around that i brought to the ycs was not my idea i got the idea from other people so this is not like me saying hey yeah i found the solution to the format i didn't but i still think it was that i still think it was great last weekend we had a like 500 people regional in in germany and like the the finals was a mirror match of this deck with uh, nico one of the like one of the creators of the deck uh winning the event it is tough to play it plays very tough grind games it has weaknesses 100 percent, but i think it was a it was a great call for the event and i'm gonna be honest if there was another ycs this upcoming week i would bring this deck again i would probably change the list a little bit but i would still feel more comfortable with this than with cash tira naturia runic is a deck that is also very strong i think the deck suffers a little bit too much against a Rysard to be my choice for a tournament but i think it's fine i think it's a good deck plunder runic i think is a fine deck i just think it pales in comparison to the other runic variants which is why i'm putting it down here i think it's a legit deck i tried it but i don't think it quite makes the jump to the level that these other runic decks are on simply because you play a lot of plunder names but you really only want to draw the tuners the ratios are not that efficient because you can only play six tuners and all the other ones you kind of need multiples of for the grind game but you don't actually want to see them unless you see a tuner with them it is not ideal but it still is a good deck if, if this deck draws a plunder tuner and a bunch of runics it's very hard to stop so i like it still the dinka bui deck i have not tested yet i can only go off of theory which is why i'm hesitant on putting it up here because i simply don't have the experience with it but it still looked very very cool maybe if i had more time to test it if there was like another major event that i was preparing for i would have given this more a try and i could have said yeah this is definitely tier one or it remains tier 1.5 i think it has the potential to be either or Maybe it's even better than this deck, but I simply don't know that. I'm like 99% sure that if there was another major event in this format, I would be bringing the Evil Twin Runic Sprite or the Fur Hire Runic Sprite. One of those two decks, I think. Even though it's not the most successful, because more people played and did well with Kash Tira, for me personally, one of those two decks is the best deck in the format. Dark World is a solid tier 2 strategy, somewhere here maybe. It's a little more reliant on the dice roll, I think, but if it wins the dice roll this deck is scary drone and lockbird and shifter are real cards this format so maybe i should move it down a little bit down the line because it isn't resilient to those cards but it is a scary deck to go up against still this goes like behind my face this goes there as well i guess drytron is better than these other decks in rogue but it's for similar reasons than dark world people play lockbird people play shifter people play bestials in side deck against branded and math mech people play uh, ash blossom in their main deck because of branded there's a lot of things that aren't looking too hot for drytron even when it gets to go first it's probably a little bit better than these other tier 3 rogue decks whether it's the bottom of tier 2 or like the top of tier 3 i don't think the distinction matters very much i would not recommend playing it either way it did top a ycs but so did tier draco slayer 
I don't hate Draco Slayer actually, but I'm seeing it nowhere in the current format. Like I'm seeing Dark World, I'm seeing Tri Brigade Sprite, I'm seeing Plunder, I'm seeing Dragon Link. I I played against Marincess at the YCS. I'm seeing Drytron do some stuff. I'm seeing Tierlemen somewhere. I'm not seeing Draco Slayer anywhere. I can't help but think that there is probably still people that play it, but they're not performing. I think it's just here like i don't know i don't hate the deck but it just doesn't do anything so like based off of results i can't put this deck higher than this flanderies i think it's somewhere in like tier 2 territory i actually think it has a fine matchup against kashira because like it doesn't care about a art pretty much at all i think the problem that's holding this deck back is that believe it or not without statue the deck can be a little bit too fair like there's definitely games where you resolve the full combo now and you can still lose that can definitely happen without statue and then on top of that it simply has the same issue as always which is bricking it loses a set percentage of games simply because it bricks and then there's also Droll and Lockbird in the format. I think all those things combined, you know, no barrier statue anymore, sometimes bricks, sometimes gets drolled, sometimes loses to a single Ash Blossom. I think that puts it smack down the middle of tier two. Labyrinth, I would have argued at the beginning of the format was up here, but I think with the amount of hate that people have introduced to their decks for Labyrinth, it fell off very rapidly. A very similar development to what happened to Branded actually, but there's actually more cards Cards that really hate on Labyrinth than cards that hate on Branded. Because for Branded, it's pretty much only Ash. For Labyrinth, it's like people are playing evenly. People are playing Lightning Storm, Feather Duster. Denko Seka has even made a return. I got Denko Seka at the regional where I brought Labyrinth. I Solomon Judgmented a evenly matched and then they Denkoed me in main phase two. Isn't that crazy? That happened in 2023 to me. So... The deck has great synergy with evenly matched, which is a very good thing, right? You can go second with three prosperity, three evenly, just fine. The problem is that Cash Chira will always keep the Arise Heart, and grinding against that one Arise Heart is really tough. I think it's a good deck, but as long as people are prepared for it inside decking, I think it remains a top tier 2 strategy. It could definitely rotate back into tier 1.5, maybe tier 1, if you make a good meta call, if people start disrespecting the deck in deck building and not putting good answers in anymore, then I think it becomes a fine deck again. Mechanical Libromancer, I kept in here because I have a collection of decks for these tier lists and Mechanical Libromancer was still on it but that deck is nowhere. It's a cool deck, but it's not a real threat. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. The Sun Avalon Rika deck, I think is a solid tier two strategy, probably around here. I think it's a quite quite a strong deck. It's end board going first. It's pretty impressive. I think it does suffer from evenly a little bit, which evenly is a card that specifically the runic decks are main decking. I think Rika doesn't have the greatest matchup against runic in general. Against the other decks, it's fine, I think, because it can definitely fit enough non-engine to beat, I think, Kash Tira decently well. There is hard evidence for this deck to be solid because there is this group of UK people that are just bringing this deck to like event after event event after event and a bunch of them are performing every time so like the deck has to be solid there has to be something about this deck it's just for some reason no one is actively exploring it and this is not even like i'm not pointing fingers because i'm the same way i have not extensively tested the rika deck because whenever it pops up in my head i'm like nah there's probably better things i don't know maybe there is not or maybe it's just good it's definitely high tier two at the very minimum sword soul i think is fair it's like an all right deck, but that's all. Most decks here, if they go first and your opponent doesn't have like a good card for going second or hand traps, they probably just win the game. Sword Soul is like, even if you go first, even if your opponent has no hand traps, no going second cards, you can still lose because you're playing Sword Soul. Because it's like really, really fair. And fair is not a good thing. Well, in game design sense, it is. I think Sword Soul is a great design, but it's just past its time, right? And then there's Trap Tricks, which I'm also slapping right down the middle of tier two. I'm a big fan of the Trap Tricks deck because it introduces a playable rogue option into into the format that is very budget friendly it kind of is a rogue deck but i don't think it's much worse than these other decks towards the bottom of tier two i think if we put these other decks into the bottom of tier two then trap tricks goes alongside 
it did fall off a little bit after the initial you know hype around like the the budget option the pack youtube series and whatnot it did fall off that is fair let's put it at the top of rogue all right and those are all the decks i had prepared for this i think that sums up the metagame really well and looking back on it i think it was actually not that bad of a format i mean it, it still is a thing right we still have this format for a couple weeks i mean there was a couple things that weren't perfect but that's always the case with any Yu-Gi-Oh format there's just never going to be that perfect world copium format where just everyone is happy everything is perfect but this format was definitely way less toxic than i expected because it was it, it really was just like okay Cash Tira is, is kind of toxic and you need to draw non-engine against Cash Tira or you need to out the Arise Heart or you lose. But as it turns out, there were just a lot of outs to Cash Tira and there were a lot of other options that could also play the game at a similar or close to Cash Tira level. And that was actually quite okay. And there's that. Let me know what you think of the list in the comments down below. If I missed any deck, make sure to, to tell me about it in the comment. I'll try to let you know what I think of it. And uh, I'll see you next time, YouTube. Bye-bye. Say goodbye to YouTube chat and uh, peace. Subscribe to the channel.